so the biggest question is, is AI gonna replace us? It's natural to wonder, what does this mean for me? Is AI a substitute for me? Whether it turns on copyright law, whether it doesn't turn on copyright law. Are there right ways to use these tools? Are there wrong ways to use these tools? Will it infringe on the rights that I have and that ASCAP protects for me? I've heard from Gen Z, young, younger kids, that they're worried about even pursuing a career in music because they think it's going to be taken over by artificial intelligence. I would hope that music creators would be super excited to have almost an infinite tool set of which you could use to create amazing things. AI is an enabling tool for musicians. I think it reduces the friction in the creative process. I think it can push ideas, and I think it really ex expands the you know, creative frontier of what we may see in music. AI is here. It's not going anywhere. It's going to progress no matter what anybody fears. Why not be ahead of the game? The path ahead for music and AI is not without complications, but there is fuel for inspiration and hope here too. This is a moment where creators need champions. We are really in a window of opportunity of how we shape the future of the music industry and how we shape the future of AI. AI is only gonna be equitable and serve what we would like it to serve if we're participating in its creation. It's important for us to have a seat at the table, to be in the room where these concepts are not just concepts, but where they're being applied in the industry. That is why ASCAP is making sure creators are part of the conversation with initiatives like the ASCAP Lab and the Music and AI Challenge. We really think about the ASCAP Lab in the very broadest sense of the word lab. It's our place to experiment. It's our place to try things out. It's our place to find new ways of working both inside ASCAP with each other, with our members, and with the broader industry around us. The ASCAP Lab and the New York City Media Lab joined together to launch the Music and AI Challenge to identify a group of companies that are developing transformational technology at the intersection of music and AI. The New York City Media Lab has been a great partner for us. We started partnering about four years ago. We've run four cohorts together, and we've really evolved together as we've created each successive program, I think we've built on what we did the year before. The NYC Media Lab really function as a conduit between industry and partners and academia. So bringing together those who work in fields with faculty and students and researchers who are developing techniques and tools that can be used in the fields. So the ASCAP Lab Music and AI Challenge is a 12-week program in which we find um, a number of university-based teams and startups dealing with cutting-edge technology this year, specifically dealing with AI and music. During the first week of the program, they kind of gave us their whole elevator pitch, what they wanted to do within those 12 weeks, and they broke it down, and they'd have like a description of how where they should be in the program week to week. At the onset of the 12 weeks, we asked for a project plan. We want to make sure that the teams are capable of delivering something tangible at the end of it, the idea that they're actually building something. So my role in the Music and AI Challenge is to lead a group of mentors throughout our 12-week program. These mentors are ASCAP employees, and they come from all around the company, and they really help to you know, guide these teams through the program. We also had a series of guest mentors um, that would come to speak on topics like IP and the rights holder landscape, um, AI ethics, storytelling and kind of learning how to present to a wide audience that might not know what your technology is. It's important for us to pick companies that we believe could have significant impact on the industry, where their technologies or their application of the technologies could change how music is being created, distributed, discovered. We chose companies where we felt like we could learn from them as well as they could learn from us. It has to be collaborative. That's a core part of the ASCAP Lab Challenge. We had five very different teams, ranging from students to startups to some established companies. And I was really impressed with all of them and their ability to see things differently, but also support each other and help each other see things the same. Hi, my name is Ed. 
Hi, I'm Anne-Marie. Hi, I'm Rachel. And we are Team Darcy. We are a suite of assistive AI tools to allow people to do what they do faster or allow people to do what they do differently. So normally when composers compose, we make choices. So we go to our door and we, we, we have in our head all the different choices that we would make. And what we end up doing is putting in very specific notes. And at Darcy, we call those the chosen notes. But with Darcy, instead of putting in the very specific notes, you go up a level and we meta compose. We go, if I had to write this over and over and over again for the, you know, and create 20 different versions in the next half an hour, what parameters could I set? What kind of intent could I put into this to it to keep the original me in there but allow for the different variations so we're not really specific we go up a level which allows for this kind of system to kind of do what you do but more of it so we have a brilliant orchestra of minds here at Darcy we're full of musicians composers artists coders well, I'm a drummer uh, with a jazz background so I'm basically uh, putting my musical mind into Darcy and so people can sort of almost have me as a drummer on their music. I grew up as a singer and a pianist. Um, I actually met Rachel at music school when we were 17. I'm a composer myself. This is based on my big brother actually, his PhD, Dr. Joe Lisk, and he's been a commercial composer. So we've been making these tools for ourselves and, and we're, we're hoping that people are gonna enjoy what they're using here. These tools are by creators for music creators and we can't wait to see what people will make with them. I'm Yotam. I'm Chris. We are Never Before Heard Sounds. The product we're developing is called Sounds.Studio. It is a browser-based assistive AI music production tool. It allows you to create extremely quickly and easily uh, by leveraging assistive and generative AI to be able to get you to an output very, very fast. Being browser-based affords uh, all kinds of cool things like uh, being able to share a session with a link, um, being able to collaborate with someone uh, without even needing to be in the same place or having every single plugin that the other person has. The flagship offering right now is stem splitting. Uh, we have our own audio engine, which allows us to very, very quickly take a song and split it into its component parts. My background is as a musician and a programmer. I actually studied music and computer science and have been working at the intersection of building instruments, um, making generative music, uh, all kinds of things for my career. I'm a musician and a programmer. I've been doing those two things uh, for my entire life, both at a pretty high level. I've always spent my life with these two things being separate, uh, and it's the first time I've combined them. About three and a half years, Yo Tom convinced me to start this company. We built Sounds.Studio because we believe that AI will not replace humans making music. A human always has to be in the loop in order for it to be interesting, to be able to tell a story that only that person can tell. And they're gonna bring their own experiences with it. That's what makes an artist. My name is Xander and I'm working on a project called Samplify. Samplify is a project and an attempt to combine automatic music transcription, uh, machine learning music transcription, and uh, classical digital signal processing techniques to essentially make music more perceivable and more clear for musicians and anyone with hearing loss. I'm a music technology student at NYU studying um, specifically hearing loss and how the hearing impaired uh, perceive music. I happen to be a hearing impaired perceiving musician, though it's very relevant to me. I've performed, I've composed, I've done gigs, and when I was around 19 or so, music started to slip away from me, and I've never really gotten it back. So that's something that I'm really interested in, in trying to solve, not just for me, but for anyone. The idea is that we start with audio. We're going to separate it. So splitting things out like the guitar and the drums and the vocals and things like that. Once you have all of these individual voices or individual streams, you can then go and transcribe the music that's happening with each one of these instruments or each one of these streams. And then you can use that MIDI information or that transcribed audio information and put it back into the audio itself, what you're doing is you're decreasing some of the original music, sure, but what you're increasing is the components and the musical information that's present in the piece, allowing people to better harmonically orient themselves within a piece. Hi, I'm Leo. Hi, I'm Steven. I'm Aspen, and we're Overture Games. 
The product we developed is Intervalic, and it's an audio responsive video game for music students. It's Guitar Hero for real instruments. One thing we really find out is practice is really boring. And the reason behind it is music has been taught and played the same way since most of uh, generations. So we decided to make the whole experience more engaging for all the students. 50% of music students quit in the first two years. And it's because they struggle to pick up their instrument in the first place. All of us here at Overture Games have a background in music. I've been composing music since I was 13. I got started with music uh, with my, my mom, actually. My mom was an opera singer, and in high school I took up uh, Choir. And I play the clarinet. I've been playing since fourth grade and also run a social media page uh, playing my clarinet on TikTok and Instagram. So the three of us went to Northwestern. In fact, that's how I met my co-founder, Steven. So I myself am a music major. I graduated with a music degree, but about a year into college, I burned out. I found that practicing was boring for me. And so I ended up making these exciting sheet music board games that I would play with my friends. And eventually I thought, wow, what if these could help someone else? What if we could make a game that gets people excited about music? And most importantly, the game works. It's something that also teach you to learn something along the way. Parents actually take kids to play test or a game. It turns out kids who never practice at home ended up playing for 45 minutes to almost an hour. And then we have to like stop them because they're late for soccer practice. So it's pretty amazing to see that. Hi, I'm Karen. I'm part of the team from Infinite Album. Infinite Album is an AI music company that creates infinitely playable, real-time generative music for gamers. So almost half of gamers get soundtrack fatigue, so they will mute the game music and play their Spotify playlists instead. We give them a customizable, game-reactive alternative to the game music. I think a lot of musicians are gamers and would love to create music for games, but don't know how or haven't been asked. Creating music for games is a very special skill. We create sound packs hand in hand with the artist. They give us three or four songs and we break that down into elements that we can use to create music infinitely in their style, which is super fun for the users. Everything is AI generated and can be reactive in real time. So all they have to really do is create music that they're really good at and give it to us. And then we will make infinitely playable soundtracks. So everybody at Infinite Album has a background in music. I spent, well, my entire career on in digital music. Ryan is our CTO and co-founder and sort of the mastermind of um, Infinite Album in general. Ryan's a musician first and a developer second. Matteo Bernardini was one of our key AI music developers on this. He is fantastic, um, a musician who sort of fell into computing and is about to get his master's in AI music. Working with these teams so closely brings the concept of AI to life. It's not just a, a theoretical concept or piece of technology. So many of the teams had great ideas of how AI can actually benefit our members, help benefit creators, help benefit publishers. One of my professors at NYU has always told me uh, not to use AI unless you have to, and not to use machine learning unless you have to. That being said, I found that um, for music transcription specifically, and for a lot of the stuff that we're trying to do in the future, for example, uh, another thing we wanna do is style transfer. So making sure that the reproduced audio sounds as close as possible to the original audio. Those are the sorts of things where machine learning really comes in handy and is really able to outperform a lot of classical digital signal processing techniques. Why AI? Because it's important when you play a video game for the game to be responsive to what you're playing. And so when people are playing their instrument with their with the game, they need that quick input and feedback based on what they're playing. AI music really is the perfect solution for games because you really just don't know what the next move is gonna be in the game until it happens. And that's really hard to write music for. The way that games do it now is they break apart pieces of songs and put them into loops, but the loops get boring after a while. And if it's AI generated, especially real time, infinitely, with responsiveness already built in, it always feels fresh, it always feels new. And if we do that in the style of the artist, we sort of break open sort of creative portals that maybe they didn't even know they had. 
Our goal is to put machine learning into musicians' hands, make it creative and expressive, and really show what's possible. I think that the way that we've been building Sounds.Studio is that it would be approachable from people who are musicians who have all kinds of, you know, like, really creative new things that they want to explore and also uh, approachable for people who this might be their first time ever doing any audio editing and they want to do something really simple or something that maybe seems simple like taking the voice out of a track but is actually extremely complicated and that's where a browser-based tool with AI embedded in it can actually be super helpful for this group of people. What our approach relies on is instead of training on you know a large data set of, of lots of output, lots of static music files, we don't look there because that's the wrong place to look. What we look at is the human input and the human intent and how, as a composer, I would express this music and why I choose the notes that I choose, not the notes that I choose. And so we train, and actually we don't train, we teach that and then the AI is able to augment that. So rather than the machine doing the writing, it's the human doing the writing and the AI actually just augments and, and enhances and empowers what I as a human have already done. Each team really had their own unique reason for, for wanting to be a part of the challenge. Some teams have a lot of music industry contacts already. Some people are really trying to get their foot in the door and meet people in different parts of the music industry. The challenge itself kind of motivated me to start working on this and to start like seeing what's possible. But I started to take this seriously and put more energy and more effort into it and do more research. And I started finding so much information about this and I was so surprised that no one else was doing anything like this. We were interested in working in the Music and AI Challenge mostly because we're just a bunch of AI music nerds and we wanted to nerd out with a bunch of other AI music nerds. We kind of feel like we're all part of the same experience at this moment in time and we thought this might get us just a little closer to other people who are building the same things we are. This uh, ASCAP Challenge really presented that opportunity to be working with or alongside both other startups that are in this same area who might be facing similar challenges, as well as interfacing with um, the ASCAP community of people who are uh, musicians or rights holders or anywhere along that kind of spectrum that uh, the product that we're building is really squarely in. Going into the challenge, we were at a really interesting time because we have all these amazing systems. We have 60 patents on this, but what we didn't have was the interaction with the user community to say, actually, can we have this? The ASCAP challenge is so great because it allows us to sort of speak directly to music creators and get our tools in their hands so they can sort of see what they can do, how they can use it, where it can take their own music. I think the teams benefited from participating in the challenge in a multitude of different ways. The direct feedback from the mentors, they could take immediate feedback and directly implement that into their product. So Darcy is an amazing example of how the power of feedback and presenting updates and getting the exposure to the ASCAP mentors can really change their trajectory in a good way. But when we were showing the mentors and when we were showing the users and, and members of the community the tools, they went, I just want that bit. Uh, that, that bit's great. Can, can I have that? And this kept on happening, which is why we, instead of kind of throwing everything in the kitchen sink at people, we decided actually what we'll do is we'll, we'll rein it back a little bit and allow people to, to access elements of the Darcy system one by one and bring it into their workflow. So we decided to release the drum module as our first uh, product. So we thought we'd do that as a nice standalone product. And then from that, we're going to start releasing different modules. And they'll all end up being greater than the sum of their parts, because as you add modules to your tool set, they all communicate with each other. So you'd have maybe a bass uh, module that will then listen to the drummer and they can sort of interact together. It was a really good experience because I, I kind of had people waiting on me to like, you know, ask me like, okay, what are the results? What are the next steps? How, how does all of this work? And being forced to explain this in contexts where, you know, people are, are musicians but are not musicians or they're not technically inclined is forcing me to really uh, be able to conceptualize the idea as a whole. If you can't explain it simply, it might not be the most uh, effective and powerful uh, product in the World. I think a real highlight was assembling the most senior executives within ASCAP as well as a group of songwriters who either have used AI tools or were curious about AI tools to come together and, and mentor these teams. I'm an ASCAP member. I 
make my living writing music. The reason I was so excited to get involved in this is I'm glad that ASCAP is taking such an interest in the members' futures with programs like this. So it was really important for me to participate in the uh, music and AI challenge uh, because one of the focuses of ASCAP is to educate um, not only its own members, but the music community at large. And it was a great opportunity to speak with the technology innovators in their early stages so that uh, they can understand some of the issues around copyright and that in order to be successful, they needed to uh, incorporate that into their models. The technology moves at such a pace that we need to partner with them. We need to be part Part of that conversation, part of that growth, so that they understand the value of copyright, that they understand the value of creators who are contributing to the value of the products that they're creating. Those fantastic meetings that we had with mentors through ASCAP uh, helped us a ton, and I think those were one of the most valuable parts of the program for us. I found Overture Games using AI to help kind of enhance music education and practice fantastic. Overture Games is an extremely impressive team for a lot of reasons. They're so driven. They really think about all the right questions you have to ask and are, are really 10 steps ahead of you know where you would assume just a company of their size and their stage is. They're really thinking long term. One of the mentor sessions was um, uh, one of the artists was Lucas Cantor, composer Lucas Cantor. And um, you know, as soon as he saw our plugin, he instantly said, you know, I want this, I would buy this. Um, that was really heartwarming for us and really exciting. They spend a lot of time trying to figure out how composers think and how they can help them do the processes that they do faster. One of the things that I really appreciated about Never Before Heard Sounds is that there's an opportunity for the way they're applying AI to really help creators take a number of tasks that they have to spend a lot of time on and simplify them, uh, make them more efficient, essentially use their technologies as a collaborator to get done a lot of what takes a lot of time and a lot of expertise, but it allows creators at the end of the day to do what they do best, which is be creative. Um, it allows us to do uh, what we as humans do best, which is to be human. That was one really good conversation that we had with uh, Nick Lehman. And what he told us essentially was like, what you're doing is going to be complicated, but it is very possible. Like everyone involved wants to figure out how to do this. And he was excited. And then I got excited that, you know, this is possible. This is doable. What I loved about Infinite Album is that they are enabling ultimate personalization of music. And as a music fan and as a gamer, I realize how important the music and the environment is to the emotional response to a game. That means my gameplay can be taken to the next level. It was really interesting to see their development because they came into the Music and AI Challenge with very specific needs. So we had a lot of questions in general about how do we approach AI copyright? So we're trying to understand how infinitely generated hours and hours and hours of AI music um, how does that fit into the processes of the music industry? How do we register it? How do we collect on it? How do we protect it? So the mentors were very helpful in helping us understand you know, the limitations of where the industry is right now. And more importantly, where their heads are at with where they want to see copyright end up and royalty collection end up. And it was it was really encouraging to see that how open they were to AI music because there can be a lot of stigma around it. So it was great to see the mentors embracing it and embracing the possibilities and um, as, it is being as optimistic as we are about it. The one standout product for me was Samplify. It addressed an issue that both impacts legacy creators as well as opens the door for current and future creators who have hearing impairments. I can actually go and know how I want to improve and I know like nine other different ways I can really make this better and more helpful to people. It's just awesome to see where these teams start from week one and end up in week 12. This year kind of, it came full circle because this was the first year we were finally able to bring 
teams together in person in New York and feel viscerally that magic of human collaboration together in the same room. Participating in this challenge, in the ASCAP challenge, directly had an effect and an impact on the way we have thought about presenting Darcy to the world and the way that we are exposing the tools that we have to the world. Being a part of this cohort and a part of this challenge really helped me to put ideas into action and to give me a, a sort of time box for which to do it so that I actually had uh, not only deliverables, but people to deliver them to and uh, ideas to try and communicate to people who weren't familiar with this work. The biggest impact that uh, this ASCAP challenge has had on SoundStyle Studio is it, it allows us to move, I think, more confidently into the licensing landscape, into the music creation landscape, which is fraught with a number of licensing questions because we've been fortunate enough to be surrounded by some of the best in the business at that and it's what they do for their living. And so it gives me at least a lot more confidence that we're doing the right thing and that we're gonna be able to continue to move forward. I think the big win for us in working with the Music and AI Challenge was just doing a deep dive with a real body, performance rights organization, a real body in the music industry um, on some of these AI music issues. Working with the music industry, there's so many different laws and regulations that you have to be aware of. Um, and just providing us with a framework to understand that and to navigate how to deal with that type of a huge bear of a, bear of a problem is, 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 I think, one of the greatest values that we were able to obtain throughout this entire experience. We hear so much about bad actors in developing AI and all of the concerns which are understandable and, and these teams are not bad actors. They are teams that are very interested in the AI principles that are the key principles for ASCAP. And so that was really incredible to hear firsthand and have exposure to the entrepreneur spirit of each of these teams. One thing this challenge really confirmed for me is that AI is and does a lot of different things. There isn't just one form of AI when it comes to the music industry or any industry. Everybody in this challenge is either trying to make music better or trying to make music faster or trying to make products that can help composers make music better. And they think about this stuff deeply and they've thought about it for many, many years. And it's just very interesting to hear from them. So I learned a lot from talking to everybody that I talked to. I would personally just really like to say thank you. I think the openness and the welcomeness of ASCAP and for creating this challenge and then kind of opening up the community. I'd like to thank the members who've been absolutely massively engaged with what we're doing. I'd like to thank all the mentors who have given us some real, really, really great feedback, but also just the Darcy team for being absolutely fantastic and giving everything to this. And I think the results that have come from it are just brilliant. So I'm very, very excited to see uh, what, what these folks uh, end up doing. I mean, they're really going to change the world for, for music. Uh, every single one of them, they're fantastic. Our focus uh, for the next six months easily is growth. It's signing more artists for sure, because we really saw the benefit of what AI music can, can sound like, how good it can sound when we work with artists. So that's hugely important to us. In five years, no more music students burn out from practicing and none of them quit. All of them keep practicing and keep playing music for life. Our mission is to bring more music in the world and it comes from people learning music. It's really our belief that AI is going to be deeply embedded in uh, how music is made. Not even in a way that you're going to necessarily be like fully aware of it at every moment moment, but just sort of under the scenes, it's going to power almost all software going forward, we really think. And we want to be that company who does that for musicians and who does it in a way that really gives them new sounds, new capabilities, and that's where we want to get to in the next five years. The next step for Darcy is that we are, we're out there now, we're releasing. We're able to release our products and the ASCAP challenge has been pivotal to help us get there, to be releasing the right thing. I can't wait to see, and more importantly actually hear, what you're all going to do with it. Looking ahead, we have concluded this year of the Music and AI Challenge, but we're certainly not finished with grappling with all of the issues surrounding AI and music. There's always uncertainty with new technology, and there's always uncertainty with technology in the arts. ASCAP is forward-looking and trying to stay with the wave of technology that is currently changing um, the way that we work and the way that we interact with each other. I think the uncertainty also creates opportunities and it also excites people. We will continue to lean in 
to create the future that we want to see for music creators. And we've done all of this for over 100 years and we plan to keep doing it for the next 100 years and more. My hope for the future landscape of AI and music is that both the creative system and the technology system will continue to learn and grow together. The future of music and AI is taking music and artists and creators into places that they can never go. For music creators, you're going to create music by using a certain amount of tools. If artificial intelligence makes your tool set larger, larger than you've ever had, what are you going to come up with then? Maybe it creates new genres. Maybe it creates new ways of discovering music. Making things that are actually useful to humans and for human creation. I think the most important thing for music creators is to see AI not as a replacement, but as a tool that really augments what you can do already. And it's something for you to interface with, sort of see how you can use it and where you can take it, where it takes your own ideas as well. The most important thing for music creators to keep in mind when it comes to music and AI is that there is now and will always be a market for good music. In my perspective, I don't see how art is just going to be replaced by artificial intelligence. People's entire human experience as an individual goes into their art. As ASCAP members, we're masters of music and masters need to master the medium of their time. And the medium of our time is technology and the medium of our time right now is art artificial intelligence.